Hello again, in this episode I'm going to show you how using ND filters on your Mavic drones, or any drone for that matter, can have a dramatic impact on the quality of your footage. Let's get to it. So you may have heard the term cinematic footage or motion blur and wonder what it means. And basically, um, when you move your hands like this, if it's nice and smooth, then it looks unnatural. Whereas if you get a little bit of blur like we're doing now, then it looks more realistic, so they say. Um, but this causes problems with auto exposure in cameras. So in order to achieve this perfect motion blur that everyone raves about, we need to use something called the 180 rule or the rule of 180. And in simple terms, all it means is you're doubling the shutter speed when compared to the frame rate. So if like I'm doing now, I'm shooting at 30 frames a second, I need a shutter speed of 1 60th. Uh, but yeah, I use 30 frames a second for most of my filming, so my shutter speed should be 1 60th of a second. Now, if you're familiar with cameras, you'll know that 1 60th of a second is quite a long time for a shutter to be open, especially in bright sunlight. So without getting bogged down with the science too much, because that could be uh, a, film, a film for another day, if you're trying to keep double your frame rate as your shutter speed, then on a bright day you'll need to use ND filters. Now there's loads of different brands, loads of different prices, good points and bad points most of them. I use Skyreap ones, which I just got off Amazon, 50 quid. They just clip on, they're a bit fiddly to clip on, and um, easy to drop, easy to get dirty thumbprints on, so I always take your lens cloth with you for a bit of a clean up before you put them on. And uh, mine also have a CPL or a colour polarising filter on. Not really much use for a drone, um, I'll explain why another time. So yeah, shutter speed, nice sunny day, 1 60th for a 30 frames per second film. And I'll show you the different effects. So I've got auto camera settings on the first clip and then we'll move through um, at 1 60th of a second for a 30 frames per second film. So I've tried to fly the same flight path for these demonstrations just to give a bit of continuity to it all so we're not looking at a lake at one scene, a beach at the other and a, a mountain range with snow on it in the third. So constant ground setting and we'll just, oh, the only thing that's changing is the ND filter. So first up is a clip of the drone in auto. As you can see, everything's nicely balanced, but when you move from light to dark or dark to light, you can see the exposure on the camera changing and that ruins your footage. Okay, so we'll take the camera out of auto settings and into manual. Um, we've already said we're gonna use 1 60th of a second for the shutter speed and uh, we're shooting at 30 frames per second. So this is what it looks like without any filters. As you can see, it's massively overexposed, you can't even see a thing. So that is no use to anyone. Next up, we've got the ND4 filter. ND4, again, massively overexposed, no use to anyone. ND8, starting to look a little bit better with the, um, the grass and the trees, but uh, still the sky seems to be massively blown out. There's no detail in it whatsoever. ND32 is uh, just about right, I think, for these uh, conditions that we're filming in. Got a nice level of detail in the sky, but the grass and the trees are still well exposed. Uh, you'll be able to fine tune that in post when you're editing afterwards. So, so that's a really good set for this particular example. So that's ND32, 60th of a second, 30 frames per second. And finally, we've got ND64, which in my opinion, again, it's all personal taste at the end of the day. In my opinion, this is um, slightly underexposed, maybe a little bit too much for my liking. Um, you can see you're losing the detail and the, the trees and the, the grass looks a bit over overshadowed. So, um, yeah, I think the best, best one for this is um, ND32 in this instance. So when the light changes, the season changes, the vegetation changes, the setting changes, yeah, you may need to reassess that and choose a different filter. But on this particular day and time, 32 ND is the way to go, or ND32 is the way to go. So here's a comparison now with all the filters applied. I've squeezed them all into one frame. So you can see the difference as they go along and how the different levels of ND have um, 
change the level ex the value of it, the exposure so you can see how the different filters have changed the exposure that's been recorded by the camera so i hope that's made sense to you and you've had a good visual um, understanding of what the different nd filters do and how they can help um, control your footage again there's times when auto settings are just fine you know again if you've not got time to be messing about or you can just guess um, which nd filter you, you might need it, it comes with experience which ones you should be using but um, yeah you'll get the idea trial and error sometimes um, you can fine tune it with the camera settings on the drone and uh, get that nice footage and again you don't always need the uh, perfect amount of motion blur it depends on the subject and what you're actually shooting at the time and what kind of story you're trying to portray so if you liked it uh, please give us a thumbs up if you didn't like it please give us a thumbs up and if you fancy seeing anything else like this or similar uh, either with cameras drones and stuff like that then uh, please subscribe and if you're really keen click the bell too uh, I'd really appreciate it. Don't cost anything, it only takes a second. Thanks very much, I'll see you soon. <laughs>